I didn't realize that that would cause everything to rot. So that was a fun learning experience. Hi Daphne. It's always the plant video she comes up for. <laughs> Hi friends, I hope you're having an amazing day. I'm Chelsea from Minimal Waste Living and today we're gonna do some repotting, propagating, and whatever else I need to do. I'm going away again for the weekend. That's what are you doing? And there's a few things that I definitely want to get done before <laughs> before I leave. Sorry, I put, so I'm filming in the office now. I feel like the echo and the lighting from the kitchen was just not it. Um, the reason I was in there is because that's pretty much the only area that has a hard floor. Um, and here it's carpet, so I put a blanket down that has more of like a slidey texture to it. I don't know why words are not happening for my brain right now, but <laughs> um, it it just makes it so that if I spill any soil, I can just easily shake it off. And she loves to use it like a water slide, so she's just like running and jumping and sliding on it because she's a kitten. And actually yesterday was her first birthday, so Happy birthday, Daphne Rose! I think what I want to do first is pot up this begonia. I still don't know what this is yet. If you do know, please, please, please let me know. I don't know if it's really catching it, the light properly but it's really it's really beautiful and has these really dark leaves but it's kind of changing in color um, and getting a little dingy ish and I'm wondering if it's because I kept it in water for too long so these are the roots that are a little crazy I definitely left it in water a little longer than I should have and if you don't know this, sometimes if you leave a propagation in water for too long, the roots will get so used to the water that they're going to have a hard time adapting to soil. I don't know why I waited so long, but now I'm at a point where I just like have to do it um, or I feel like I might lose this plant. So I don't think that I want to put it in moss because I think I don't think I want to grow it in moss long term. I don't know that begonias grow well in moss and I think because the roots are so like intricate and delicate and fragile looking I feel like switching from moss would be really difficult because I think that a lot of those roots would tear off um, as I'm trying to take the moss off so I think she's just gonna go in soil and we'll see what happens so let's do this all right, I've got my potting mat here. <laughs> and I guess I'll leave it flat. I think it's hard for you to see if I pin it up. So we'll leave it flat for now. And I think one of the best things I did was put my soil in a bin instead of the bag. I. I've been getting gnats and I think it's from the soil, but I'm not sure yet. So this is kind of, I'm hoping that this will tell me whether it's the soil or not. Um, oh yeah, this is my little kettle that I use <laughs> to water things. I uh, don't know why I haven't gotten a watering can yet, but I don't know. So I think I'm going to pot her in. Uses. okay one second please okay so I think I actually am going to do terracotta I was thinking maybe I shouldn't but I think it would be good to get um, the aeration and the only other nursery pots that I have are solid black and and brown and I just want to be able to get a I don't know if I can't get a good eye on the roots I at least want them to have really good draining although these pots were all painted 
um, at my birthday and I don't actually know how the paint would affect the um, like water wicking abilities of the terracotta so hello Daphne so I feel like these ones might be okay because they're not fully painted but the one that I painted I fully painted this one. I don't know, I was going through a lavender phase. I still am going through a lavender phase, so I don't know who I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I even painted the bottom of this. So maybe I won't use this one because I'm not sure. Ma'am, what are you doing? Please stop. I think, no, I'm not gonna risk it with this one yet. I think I'm gonna use Thank you. You think this one? All right. So we'll use this one for the begonia. And then this one, I didn't actually tell you yet, but I have some seeds here. There's a net. It's right on your foot. Oh no. I get it. Ah, yes. Sorry, friend. All right. I keep getting off track. We are repotting the begonia. Let's do this. I'm I'm getting bins for all of my potting materials. So far, I just have... Oh, so there are nuts in here. Daff, Daff, what do we do? Get them, Daff. Alright, I saw one. Does that mean there's a lot more? buggy in here. It's definitely buggy. I'm seeing things crawling, seeing things flying. Daphne clearly sees things. Yeah. I don't think we can use this stuff, Daph. Daph. Alright, so that puts a kink in my plans. Alright. We're gonna box this back up. So, I do have some, do I repot the begonia in moss or do I wait until I get my supplies to make my aeroid mix? No, because it's not aeroid. Hmm. Okay, while I let that thought simmer, we're going to do other things. So put these aside. So there are some other things that were on my to-do list today. I have some tomato seeds here that I did not let dry yet really, maybe like a little bit, and I also didn't let them germinate either. My plan was to just put them in soil, cover them, and just see what happens. Now that I have this little hiccup here, I don't know what I'm gonna do, so maybe I will put them in like a little bag. Um, and let them germinate a little bit. So again, I will put that to the side until I figure that out. I also have an avocado here and I would love to grow an avocado plant. I haven't been able to do that. I've tried so many times um, and it has never gone well. Either they don't root or unfortunately one time I let it, I let it unalive itself because I forgot to water it. Um, yeah, so there have been some, some times that I've tried this and it did not, it didn't take, but we're going to try again. So what I'm going to do is I took off all of the avocado that was on the seed here, just kind of like ran it under water and just kind of took off all the stuff. And then now I'm going to put it in this container. Boop. just fill it with water and let it sit for the weekend probably and then by that point it'll make it easier to scrape off the uh, the lining that's on the shell and then once that's done then I can sit it over water this is the part where the roots are gonna come from I don't know how well you can really see this but I'll just kind of sit it over a container and 
let it grow some roots and um yeah we'll see how this goes for the however many th time this is so got my little kettle here just gonna fill it with water and I do want to cover the whole thing with water there we go put the lid on come on friend there we go all right and now we wait so one thing on my to-do list is done I like that now here I have what I've been told is a syngonium elbow that has reverted I'm still not convinced. I feel like when I see Syngonium Albos, they have much wider leaves than this. And so, I don't know, I've never seen one that looks like this. So if you have any other ideas of what this could be, please let me know. I haven't been able to, to find out. Also, it doesn't help that the leaves are growing in really wonky, um, which is the reason that I want to propagate this. Do a little chop and prop. Um, yeah, this leaf is really struggling to unfurl. This one really struggles. So it's like each leaf that comes, they're getting smaller and like more deformed. So I don't really know what's going on with the plant. So we're gonna, we're gonna chop and prop. I just before filming disinfected my pruning shears. So we're all good there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I cut just below a node. So once I do that, I will show you. All right. So, right, we're gonna have to get up. Okay, I just had to do a minute of research because I started to second guess myself. Um, so yes, you wanna cut below a node um, and a node is, either where the petiole of your leaf leaf stem petiole so the petiole is technically a part of the leaf this is the leaf blade the petiole is what connects the leaf to the stem and so where that came off of is a node but also where these arrow roots are coming from are also nodes as well so and you need these nodes to be able to grow roots from so we've already got some aerial roots started and so when I plunk this into some water, it, it'll start to grow some more roots. And those aerial roots will help the production of even more roots. So unfortunately, and maybe not so unfortunately, we will have to be losing this leaf. Otherwise it will just be in water and will rot anyway. So we're gonna chop this one off. Goodbye friend. And we can't, grow anything from just this leaf like I said we need a, a node and there is no node here it's just the petiole and the leaf here so unfortunately if you're left with this nothing you can do with that so we'll put that to the side and then we will cut some more so we've got another so this that I have here is what we call a wet stick and that's because there are no leaves attached to this so these ones have have leaves attached to them so they can be propagated in water this is something that I'll want to propagate in moss and from these nodes here you can see uh, the nodes right here there's one on either side that is where the roots will grow from and if I just put that in moss then hopefully they will start to grow some roots and uh, some new leaves. Again, we're cutting below the node. Boop. And yeah, I'll leave the leaf. Down here, it looks a little unalive. I think I'm still going to try to propagate um, using the wet stick method because again there's no leaves on these. Cutting through, they're still alive, they're still cooking. So alright, we'll create some wet sticks from that. 
And the stem, I'm not actually sure what, if anything, is going to grow from this. I'm going to assume not, but I don't know. I'm still very new to all of this, so some things I'm like, oh yeah, I know what that's about. I know, I know what's going to happen. And then there's other things that I'm like, I have no idea, so let's find out. Let's find out together. Um, now I'm just disinfecting the pruning shears before all of the whatever that is, goo, <laughs> that came out of the stems um, dries on here. Let's find out what that is coming out of the stems, because I want to know. Let's see. Let's put this here. On this bin we're no longer using. Okay, so... This video is going to be a lot of just editing out nonsense. So you can see the areas where I cut the stem. There is this white, creamy, like milky sap. How many more adjectives can I use to describe this? Um, and I believe that that is just a natural occurrence when the stem is damaged to help the, the plant uh, recover and save itself. And so these, you can see little nodes here and that's where you want to cut below um, for any of your cuttings. Okay, so I have a little jar here. We're just gonna fill it up with water and put in the cuttings. And then hopefully within a few weeks we'll have some nice roots growing. I'm also going to use take root powder um, and that really just helps encourage the root growth. So all you do is stick the, the part of the stem that you cut in the rooting powder and then you just kind of knock the plant on the side uh, to get rid of any of the excess, put it in water. It's as easy as that. Do the same thing here. Get rid of the excess, put it in there. This one grew and all funky. It's all right. That is exactly why I'm chopping and propping this plant. I was not happy with how leggy it was and just how weird and wonky all of the new leaves were growing in. So it just felt like it needed a reset. So hopefully when it regrows, it will be, it'll be good. And I think I heard somewhere if you revert, if a plant of yours has reverted and you propagate it, you could potentially regrow the, the variegation. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but I guess we'll see. So if this is really a reverted <laughs> Syngonium Albo, I guess maybe this could tell me. Um, if any new growth comes in and it's variegated, then maybe I'm wrong. But all right, so we've got two things on our to-do list, now off the to-do list. I don't know if anything can happen from this. There's a lot of roots here, but there's no nodes or anything, so... We're just gonna put this over here for now. And what else is on the to-do list? Ah, I need to get some moss and put these in a prop box. I think the stem is excessively long. I don't think it really needs to be that long because really what we're looking at is the, the node here. So I'm just gonna trim this up so it can fit better. Woo! And uh, the little prop box that I have and I will be right back again. So after thinking about it, I really don't think that I want to use the soil. It's probably just going to get tossed, which is really unfortunate. Um, especially because, you know, it wasn't necessarily cheap. And it's just a waste. I just don't like being wasteful. And 
so I don't know. I'm, I'm very disappointed. But I have read a lot of stories lately and heard a lot of stories lately about how <clears throat> premixed soil can definitely carry or tends to carry um, gnats and eggs and things like that. So I can't say I'm surprised. I'm just disappointed. And I wish that I had heard those things before I bought this mix. And yeah, so all I'm doing here is I just have a little bit of sphagnum moss uh, that I had already set aside for something else I was going to propagate, but I think I I didn't get to it or something. So um, I'm just all I'm going to do is I will stick these in some rooting powder on both ends. Don't know if that's really necessary, but. That's what I've been doing and I've been having really good luck with pretty much all of my propagations except for or my wet sticks except for the first few that I did where I kept the moss way too moist. I didn't realize that that would cause everything to rot so that was a fun learning experience. But yeah other than that I've had really good experiences so I just have them kind of laying in here and within probably a few weeks these will probably start oops sorry friends these will probably start uh, growing some roots so that's good yeah so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up if begonias can grow in sphagnum moss because that seems to be the only medium that I have right now other than like orchid bark I think that wouldn't be moisture retentive enough because I know begonias like to have um, they don't like to dry out so can begonias I wonder if they can grow in semi-hydro and just perlite. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I grow begonias and perlite? some ingredients coming for creating a chunky aeroid mix but part of that is cocoa choir and I feel like that would be a decent medium for the begonia to grow in um, with some perlite to give it a little bit of aeration but I think I might try just the perlite and just see what happens Yeah, you know what, let's experiment. I don't know, it's already not doing, I don't know, I feel like it's already kind of starting to go downhill a little bit, but then does that tell me that you don't like to just be sitting in water? This is 
is a really cool plant and I usually don't like begonias. I just like the silvery speckles on the leaf. And it changes so much in different lighting. I don't know what to do. This soil being what it is just threw off my whole plan. Uh, and why is there no information on people growing begonias in perlite? I cannot be the first person to think to do that. Maybe because it didn't work. Reddit. Yes, Reddit. Tell me what happened. Oh. So this person propagated in, instead of sphagnum moss, they propagated in perlite in like a shallow bowl. And then put clear plastic wrap over it. And that's not what I'm trying to do. So maybe I need to say like semi hydro. Begonia. I hope this is exciting. I feel like I'm going to end up cutting all of this out because y'all don't need to just watch me research. Uh, what time is it? Oh my gosh. In Pawn and Lekka. <clears throat> I don't think I have enough Pawnee things. Begonias in Lekka, I don't have Lekka, but... Semi Hydro Begonia Perlite. Is Perlite Semi Hydro? I have so many questions. Is Perlite considered Semi Hydro? Friends, we're all learning together today. Perlite is not a renewable resource. It says here it forms the base of soil and volcanic activity and won't be available forever. What? This article doesn't make sense. I think this was written by like AI or something because I don't understand what I'm reading. I'm just going to wait for the battery to run out. Well, I'm glad that I didn't just kind of impulsively pot up the begonia in perlite because from what I'm reading, it seems like it, it feels like people aren't doing it for a reason. And I have read a couple of things saying that it wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Where did you go? So we're not going to use the soil. That's going to go in the trash, unfortunately. Um, I do have, like I said, I have some Aeroid mixed ingredients coming. Um, 
some tomorrow uh, and over the weekend and I'll probably just take from that probably the cocoa core and the perlite I'm definitely moving the house the whole house all of the plants to soilless mixes soilless mixes it's hard to say so a lot of these plants are going to get potted up on moss poles and yeah just no more soil they will be in aeroid mixes that are chunky and then I'll I'll make variations of that chunky mix for other plants like the begonia and what else do we have over there I think some of the plants that I just repotted I'm gonna hold off on those like the coleus uh, coleus kong roses that that I potted up a couple of weeks ago I think it's too soon to go make them go through that again I have a snake plant that I just potted up too um, so yeah I think a lot of them I'm gonna wait on but I'm definitely going to eventually move everything over to soilless because the gnats are not it and yeah and also I can't remember if I said this already but my white butterfly syngonium has thrips again so this is the third time now that I'm treating it and I did hear from Samantha from Planted she did tell me that syngoniums tend to get infestations of gnats and thrips and things like that from when they're planted in soil so she recommended planting in sphagnum moss so once Maybe I'll check on it and see if I can plant that up in moss today. I'll be right back. All right, so change of plans. We are, I'm gonna be patient. I'm not gonna do anything um, impulsively with this begonia here. It's already been waiting for weeks to get repotted. So I think it can wait another, you know, five or so days until all of the soil and everything gets here. So. Yeah, we're gonna wait on that. And what we're gonna do instead is repot the Syngonium White Butterfly and Sphagnum Moss because yes, I just treated it for pests, but I treated it this morning. I just wiped down all the leaves, didn't see any pests in there. And I think the best thing that I can do for that plant, even though it might go into some shock, it's pretty healthy, so I think it can handle getting a repot right now I think that's the best thing I can do to help try to avoid this ha from happening again especially since I'm going away so let's do that but first let's clean up all right ready and we're back all right so we've got the white butterfly here it's in pretty good shape actually so I think it can I think it can handle what it's about to go through. Um, it definitely handles the insecticidal soap really well the last three times that I've done it. And <clears throat> ideally that will be the last time. You step in water? What are you doing? You're so silly. You're not gonna like this because there's gonna be wet soil everywhere. But all right, so. I maybe I should hydrate the moss a little bit so it's got some time. So I just have a little bowl here. But I'm gonna put some moss in. And honestly, I don't think it's gonna need all that much. So and of course the blanket that I put down to prevent things from falling. I didn't put all the way back to here, which was very silly of me. My thinking was that Daphne might knock something over the front side. So <clears throat> it covers the front very well, just not where I'm at, which is where it really needs to be. All right, so I've got a little bit of water here. Mm -hmm. 
definitely don't want it to be too wet. It should be sort of like a wrung out sponge. And now, I'm just gonna give it a little mist. Seems good. So we'll let that sit. I know, Daphne. I know. Careful, baby girl. She sees all the gnats flying around. The worst thing I did was open that bin. So I think I'm going to put the soil back in here just to keep things a little more tidy. And once I'm done, I'm going to give this whole pot a nice little wash through. <sighs> All right, friends, it is a little bit of time passed since I started this whole process of repotting this uh, Syngonium. The camera ended up running out of space and now it's saying that it's running out of battery which is super fun why didn't i charge the battery during my little break i don't know but let's see how far this gets us last time it was telling me the battery was gonna die it it ended up lasting for like an hour so let's hope that's what happens again today <clears throat> so we have this butterfly syngonium here it's was just treated this morning for thrips. And when I last checked, I didn't see anything on it and I still don't, so that's great news. I'm gonna get as much of this soil off as possible. I might even run it under the hose to really get the soil off. <clears throat> because I know that there's possibly some gnats like eggs in this soil which makes me I can't I can't think about it <laughs> especially when my hands are in the soil but yeah I think at some point I'm just gonna end up doing way too much damage to the roots so What is your most problematic plant? I feel like for me, it's this one, surprisingly. Surprisingly, it's not my Imperial Red that had the bacterial infection or the um, leaf blight. You would think that that would have been my most problematic plant, but it was sort of like as soon as I cut everything away and just isolated it and just made sure that I washed my hands every time I touched it, that I mean it's not that hard to do that um, and as of now it still looks healthy it's still growing this is the one I've had to treat three times now within the last like two months so this for sure is my most problematic one I'm really hoping that getting it in moss will just get rid of all of these issues it's now had thrips Did it have mealybugs? I think I saw like one or two. And I don't think I really treated it at that point. I think I just kind of like got rid of them um, <clears throat> by wiping the leaves. And I never saw them again. But yeah, so thrips three times and then a couple of mealybugs. It's like, what's going on with you? Why are you doing this? Why is this happening? Thought I saw something. Sheesh, these roots are just like coiled around one another. I don't know. This might be the best I can get with my hands. All right, I think he 
Yeah, I'm gonna run this under the hose. Unfortunately, I can't really bring you with me because I don't think I can get like a good camera angle of that. So friends, So, I will be seeing you soon. All right, so I've gone through and really, really wiped down these roots with the hose. And honestly, so I kind of questioned the decision to do it that way, to do it with the hose rather than with my hands. <clears throat> because the hose seems like especially when it's on like a very strong sprayer it feels more it looks more harsh to do on the plant than to just do it with your hands however having done both methods definitely the sprayer is the way to go um, it definitely gets way more of the uh, the potting soil off of the roots and you can see, I mean, I don't know how well you can see, but I can see a lot of the roots that are the smaller, like secondary and tertiary roots, they would have definitely broken off had I done it by hand. And they look very much intact, very healthy um, with the way that I did it with the hose. So definitely recommend that method of doing it. I wasn't able to get every single speck of soil off but I did get most of it and a lot more than I would have been able to with my hands. So yeah, I'm definitely an advocate for that method. Um, other than that, I don't think I'm gonna break these roots up, but very cool, there's like a little peace sign. I don't know if you can see the roots make like a peace sign. I don't know. Anyway, it looks cool to me. Um, so I have a pot here. This is the pot from the maybe um syngonium reverted syngonium elbow i gave it a good rinse and i don't want to reuse that pot that needs a very good clean through um so this has no soil or anything in it. it's clean so it's good to go and all i'm gonna do is all i'm gonna do is just literally wrap the roots in sphagnum moss Is that what I want to use? Yeah. I'm just going to wrap them. We're going to get the pot over here. We're going to put a little bit at the bottom as well. And then we'll put some more on top. Just want to make sure that they're really well covered. Okay, I got like the perfect amount of moss. I love when that happens. What is this? Oh, oh there's a bunch of those. They look like, um, looks like little flowers almost in the moss. Like that seeds would come out of. But I don't know. I think this might be steak because this medium doesn't really hold it up as as nicely as the soil mm. well I will get her a steak at some point but this is hopefully going to save this plant from getting more and more and more thrips because like when I tell you it's been back to back to back it's been back to back to back <laughs> so I'm very much ready for that not to be the case this plant has been isolated since the day I got it um, so at least at least I kept it isolated I'm very glad about that there was a point where I almost reintroduced it to or introduced it to all of the other plants I'm so glad I didn't. So I think this is gonna just go back to the same spot. Um, and I don't know, the spot is right next to what is normally an open window in the kitchen. 
and I'm like, is it the location? Because it's a great location, it's thriving, it's growing really well. Like literally every day I turn this plant towards the sun uh, so that like wherever it's growing towards, I'll turn it the other way so that it can kind of round out a little bit more in the growth. And every day it just like, that all the leaves will just gravitate towards the sun. So literally every single day I'm, I'm turning it. So I think it's getting really good, <clears throat> really good lighting for what it wants. And it looks really healthy. And what are you? Are you a thrift or are you soil? I'm gonna say it was soil. It's soil. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, friends. I think that is it for me today. This was a lot of plant care and things, and a lot of um, course correcting because things did not work out the way that I planned them to <laughs> or hoped that they would. But, um, I'm glad I was still able to get some things done. I'm excited for the avocado seeds to start growing. What else did we do, Daphne? Um, and the Syngonium Albo, I'm really excited for to see what that turns into. It was so leggy and just like, I don't know, it just wasn't great to look at and all of the growth was coming in all weird. So I'm really hoping that now that I'm propagating that, uh, the new growth will be less weird. Um, and maybe even show some variegation. I don't know if that's how it works or not, but we'll see. It's all it's all a learning experience. So, oh, what a big yawn! What a big yawn! But <clears throat> all right, friends. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.